Hello, everybody, and happy holidays. My name is Leslie, also known as Hacks for Pancakes, and I'm speaking to you from here in the North Pole about a topic that's kind of different for InfoSec, which is InfoSec social media, particularly Twitter. So some of you know who I am. Um, I'm known otherwise as Hacks for Pancakes, and I've been doing this for a while, since the 1990s. It's been fun. Um, I'm currently a level 13 rogue. If you haven't been following my profile over the years, it's taken a while to level up a little bit. I've been doing security professionally for a little bit over a decade. And around 2010, I decided it was a really good idea to join tw Twitter, even though I thought it was a terrible idea at the time. Then I did some things, and now I have 100,000 Twitter followers, which is bad and good, and we'll talk about why, between that and other social media. and. I want to give you a caveat and a warning for this talk. It's full of lots and lots of air quotes. I'm going to use words like cyber and influencer, and I don't want you to take them very, very seriously. So I'm not really sure why my Twitter account is so popular. I'll give you some ideas about why some accounts get a lot of followers and some don't, but it doesn't really matter because it's not a very important thing in the real world. Um, so we're not going to focus on that. Let's just talk about what I've learned through having a lot of interaction with people on social media. And the thing that I found out, the lesson that I've learned about having a lot of follower base on social media, especially in the InfoSec space, is that it's actually a real job. Um, over a certain number of followers, and I'm not gonna give you an exact number, you start having many, 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 many quotes, air quotes, influence. And what does that actually mean? Well, you reach a lot of people, and that's bad and good. You can do a lot of good with a lot of reach, but you also can't do things like randomly call out companies and complain anymore because it starts a big firestorm and people get really upset and you can have a lot of negative consequences on people's careers and their days, et cetera. And there's a lot of OPSEC and safety concerns that come with having a big public follower base too. Um, all of a sudden people are trying to dox you, trying to find out where you live. And um, there's a lot of negative interactions that become concerning in the real world. And the other thing that I found out is that at a certain point, you can't really be yourself anymore. You kind of have to construct a curated personality. So you can't be too perfect. You can't be too flawed or depressing. You have to try to be mostly positive for people in most cases, and you have to try to stay mostly professional. You have to have a certain level of responsiveness and engagement, and you have to try to make sure all of the things you post are factually correct and relevant to current discussions. But even with all this work and all these people that you're reaching, at the end of the day, being a quote unquote influencer really doesn't mean much in the real world. I don't get a special line at Starbucks or anything. But there's a really dark side to this too, to having this reach and talking to all these people across the world. People have unrealistic expectations about who I am and what I can do, and they get really angry at me sometimes when those expectations aren't met. And that might be responding to them really, really quickly, or getting them information on any given InfoSec topic, whether that's red teaming or blue teaming. Um, and uh, that's meant that I've had to learn how to say no to people, which really hurts because I like to help people as much as I can. Um, and I've had to learn how to say no to requests for you know, assistance, mentorship, guidance, just because I'm overwhelmed as an individual human being. And people will assume re relationships and familiarity that aren't there. So as you start getting more interaction with people in InfoSec social media, they're going to start assuming that you're best friends, even though you've only met online and maybe it's been kind of a one-sided conversation or you've just been providing them professional guidance and they think you have a personal relationship. So again, you have to learn how to say no and set boundaries. Somebody will always troll or contest any statement that you make or opinion that you share um, once you have a certain level of follower base. So you can talk about something totally benign about security and then people will still contest it or troll you and it's just the nature of having a lot of people follow you on the internet. So that means that mental health and self-care are really, really important. But what have I learned from all of this? You might not be trying to get 50,000 or 100,000 or 150,000 followers on social media and meet that many people in security, but Twitter's still a really important resource to a lot of us in security and the hacking communities and the security communities. And so here's what I've learned. Uh, first of all, don't let the trolls get you down. Um, the internet is full of them. And 
there's different kinds of trolls, okay? So the first one are the group of people who are just dealing with problems in their own lives. And they take it out poorly and they take it out on you. And that happens in customer service, unfortunately, and we wish it didn't. But it happens on, this, on the internet too. People have a really, really bad day and they, they deal with that by shouting at somebody else and trying to make somebody else miserable. And some other people, they don't realize they're being cruel or offensive. They just don't have that level of, of social knowledge and they haven't been in that situation before and they don't know your perspective. So they're not deliberately being offensive, but they might really hurt your feelings. And then there are people out there who are really cruel and they're really sociopaths or just really malicious people. And none of these people are your problem. Um, you can try to help people who don't realize that they're being hurtful, but none of this is your problem and you can't take that on emotionally on the internet. You really, have to, you really have to step back and understand that you don't understand why other people are being cruel. You're not on the, their side of their computer. And this happens to all of us. We all deal with trolls. We all deal with people who are cruel to us. And it, it's not OK, but it's something that we all face. And the decision whether to engage or ignore bullies is really tough. Sometimes it's appropriate to do one, and sometimes it's appropriate to do the other. It depends on them, and it depends on you. Sometimes we can't let cruelty slide because we want to protect other people. But at other times, there's, there's no purpose in engaging. It just makes things worse. But what about the good things about being on InfoSec Twitter? So here's the sales pitch for why you should be on social media, why you should be on InfoSec YouTube and InfoSec LinkedIn and InfoSec Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. It's an incredible source of real-time security information, both hacking, cybersecurity education, et cetera, job postings. It's, it's one of the best real-time resources out there. It's a really easy way to talk to anybody, whether that's you know, people who are higher profile, mentors, researchers, people who developed our security tools. You can talk to them easily and they usually respond. It's a great way to network and find job opportunities and learn about conferences in your area. It's a wonderful social outlet if you're isolated and you can't reach other people in your local area who are interested in security or hacking. I've made lots of good friends through Twitter, real life friends. I've men, made many uh, business connections and found customers through it. And I've reached lots of students and job seekers. And I asked people on Twitter to tell me the kindest tweet that somebody in security has ever sent to them. And I got more than I can share in one slide, but you, what you're doing on Twitter and how you interact with people really makes a difference. You can see these are phenomenal. Pause the talk and take a look at this and just read these wonderful things that have changed people's lives for the better. And people have done nice things for me too. Um, when my mom was very ill, I asked people to send her cards and I got hundreds from people in security. It was amazing. And then when I had trouble with my landlord and they were doing some bad security stuff, I asked for help and I got a ton of assistance in doing last minute research. I'm saving my third wish. I don't know what I'll need in the future. Maybe I'll be stranded on a desert island. But seriously, most of the people I've met on InfoSec Twitter have been really decent. So pay it forward and be decent to others as well. And here's some tips for getting value from InfoSec Twitter if you're on it. First of all, have reasonable expectations of humans. Um, they can only do so much, they can only respond so fast, and they might be overwhelmed with real life. Social media is not most of our jobs. Karma is real. If you're kind to people, usually it'll come back to you. Um, if you're cruel to people, that might come back to you too, but it might take a while. List to your friends that the space can get really overwhelming now, especially with negative noise. Set boundaries for the time you're going to spend on social media, the amount of, of abuse and the types of abuse you're willing to take from trolls and people who are angry. Triggers in terms of content that you really can't look at or you don't want to see for various reasons and request for help or assistance or anything. You have to learn to say no and set boundaries. Consider what you'll share on social media before you share it. The internet is forever, and we don't want to share something that's going to negatively impact us later in terms of our pro professional or personal life. It's okay to take breaks from Twitter or any social media if you're getting overwhelmed or it's impacting you emotionally or physically. Look for the helpers. When you see a lot of trolls out there, look for the people who are doing good in the security community who are sharing tools and research and guides, great blogs and blogs. Look for those folks. Look for the people who are helping people find jobs. And you can do a lot of good on social media still too. People don't know all the things about security that you think are common knowledge. Your insight is really, really important and so is your experience and perspective. You have a lot to share in blogs and on social media. 
And finally, set goals about what you actually want to get out of being on social media. Um, understand that maybe you're looking for security conferences or you just want to keep up with, to date with what's going on in the security news space. Whatever that is, understand that you can go outside that scope and it can become overwhelming. Now, quickly, here's the contentious part of my talk. What could I change if I was captain of InfoSec Twitter? And I'm not. Um, this is what I would change. First of all, stop fighting one another over things that won't matter in a month. We get into a lot of small arguments about small things that blow up into big, hurtful arguments where we shout at each other. Um, there's a lot of things that really don't matter in the, in the larger space, in the real world, that we, we hurt each other over on InfoSec uh, social media. Understand that people out there have real battles you can't see online. They're angry for their own reasons. They're upset. They're fighting for things for their own reason. And that's not necessarily visible to us. Understand that not everyone is living or has lived the same life as you. They have different concerns for different reasons. They are concerned about different social issues or political issues. They're concerned about how security and privacy issues impact them personally because of their own experiences in professional circumstances or on their own. And that's really important to them. Be professionally respectful of, college, of colleagues and fellow researchers. So understand that people have professional expertise and security in their own niches, and it's not right to explain to them how to do their jobs. Um, uh, be respectful when you critique them. Be uh, professionally respectful of their experience and their accomplishments. And when you run into the toxic people, Understand that you have to make a choice whether to engage or walk away and uh, make a rational choice about that. And I suggest people think about it like they're a kindergarten teacher and they're in a room with kids who are disruptive and unruly and they're making a decision of how to deal with them. So um, when you really reach a negative point and you're about to tweet something angry or you know post something angrily on YouTube, sleep on it or count to 100 before you say what you want to say, um, especially if you're really angry and exhausted. Um, Sometimes just being hungry and exhausted and tired has a huge influence on your mood and how you approach other people. And just getting a good night's sleep will, have a di will give you a completely different perspective. And remember, the internet is forever. So the thing that you post in anger might not be how you feel the next day, but it may have a huge impact on your persona and your career. A positive attitude will help you in the world. It's just Twitter. Um, you guys, it's just social media. It's, yeah, influencing really doesn't mean much because it's just a social media site. Um, if you react positively to negative situations, it'll help you and it'll help the people around you. Try to do something positive if you have a bad day. If somebody cuts you off in traffic, you can either get mad about it or you can say something nice to the cashier at the store that you stop at. Um, and one is going to make you feel better and one's going to make you feel a lot worse. And remember, the internet is forever. So the things that you post, um, they're going to be archived, they're going to be cached. Um, you never know when the thing is that you tweeted is going to be copied by a bunch of people and stored for later. Just give a lot of thought to the things that you post and how they impact yourself and other people. My verdict on Twitter? I wouldn't change the last decade on it for anything. Um, I've made a lot of great friends and connections. It's been marvelous. I've made an impact, I think. I hope some kind of small impact in the world that other people can measure someday. Um, I'm not going to guess what that was, but I hope that I've done something meaningful. I still struggle as a quote unquote, big air quotes, work influencer with work life balance and keeping up with all the requests I get from people. And there have been some really, really, really bad days where people really came after me and they're really cool to me or to other people that I care about. And that's really rough. There's a price for being engaged and influential on social media. But even if you don't want to be in that space, even if you just want a feed of information and an interaction with the security community, I still encourage you to be on InfoSec Twitter. There's a lot of good stuff out there. It's a great way to find out about conferences. It's a great way to find out about new research and tools and what people are doing and learning about. So thanks for joining me at the North Pole today. I hope that you're all enjoying KringleCon and the Holiday Hack Challenge. I hope to see you all online in the virtual space of social media and virtual conferences in the future.